Alright, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about a lot of rain that's going to be coming for the southeastern and eastern United States and south central, so Texas, southeast, all of these areas that have been lacking rain. And also, we're going to talk a little bit more about our winter storm, Aubrey, our blizzard that's been going on. By the way, some people were wondering, they're like, are you naming winter storms? Uh, I'm just going based off of the Weather Channel's winter storms because of the way that Google search words and all of those types of tags work. It helps me reach more people, obviously, and keep more people in informed. So that's why I think it's a good thing, but a lot of people do think that it's kind of cheesy. I think it's cheesy too, but it does actually help reach a lot more people to be able to be informed and see the videos. But before we get started with this one, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, the main thing driving our rain that we're going to be seeing for the east is cold fronts. We're going to be seeing more frequent cold fronts in the month of October. Obviously, we had like none in September, but now in October, we are actually looking at some, you know, colder air coming in, which is going to lead to some cold fronts possibly. As you can see here, this is in 78 hours. This is 12Z Monday, so about Monday morning, October 14th. And you can see where the blue separates from the orange very sharply there in the east. That's where our cold front is set up. Now on the same frame, or actually just the frame earlier, I sometimes mess it up a little bit, but you can see we do have a lot of precipitation there just ahead of that. That's our cold front, and that's where it's picking up the fact that we might have precipitation along it. So this is going to be one of the driving regions or reasons that we're going to have precipitation throughout our region. Now after this one, here's the total precipitation in the east. So you can see that we do pick up at least half an inch in a lot of these blue areas, and a little bit under half an inch in some of these green areas, but still... Already, that's a lot more precipitation than some people saw in the whole month of September. So, we're starting off things in October, or get at the middle point, we're starting off things at a really good point. A lot of areas along the coast have seen precipitation with our, uh, at least a little bit of precipitation with our nor'easter. But we're going to start seeing precipitation inland as well. Now, let's move on to another cold front you can see. And again, all of these are moving from west to east, so I'm just showing them at their peak. But a lot of these, even though I'm showing this one in kind of the more central regions of the United States, it does reach the coast. So if you are along the coast, it is going to eventually come there as well. This is getting a little bit far out, so this isn't perfect accuracy, but I just wanted to show that it is showing the chance for cold fronts in the future. So along Indiana, southern Missouri, and into Arkansas and Oklahoma, pay attention here. You can see we do have precipitation ahead of that. A little bit more showers out of this one, but you can see way ahead of this one, we do have precipitation for the southeastern United States um, ahead of this cold front. So a lot of good things are coming from these cold fronts coming through. Here's another one. You can see where the blue sharply separates from the red there along, I guess, uh, into Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, and up and through those areas. You can see a lot of precipitation south to north. Uh, we have a very strong cold front here by the 23rd. This is extremely far out, so this one might not be very accurate, but I did find it interesting that it's still trying to show cold fronts developing this far out. So it does think we're going to be in a, stuck in a pattern where cold fronts will be quite common um, throughout this, I guess, model run. And, and you can see by time we're at the end of the run, we do have a lot of those pinks showing up by the time we're at the later portions of October. A lot of pinks and pretty much everywhere in the east that's been lacking precipitation is at least in the blue. So everywhere in the, the eastern United States is going to range anywhere from half an inch of rain in those darker shades of blues to in those darker shades of purple getting about six inches of rain. So a lot of relief from the droughts that a lot of you have. That's the main point of this video. Now, I also wanted to talk about uh, a little bit of a pattern we're going to get in here. I want to pay attention to the Northwest, and I know I've been talking about you guys a lot, and that's because you guys are getting a lot of action with these big snowstorms, and midway through this run, about, uh, about eight days out, something very interesting happens, and I know a lot of you from there are not going to like this. We're paying attention. This is 186 hours out. So this is Saturday, October 19th. Let's skip to later in the day, October uh, 19th and look, Idaho, uh, Wyoming, Montana, we're all starting to see a little bit of snow develop here. This is how they've been starting out. Oh, 998 millibar low pressure system there. Uh, and then by late on the night, Saturday, heavier snow starting to develop for those Rockies. 983 millibar low pressure system over Denver there. Very, very interesting. And later on the day, Sunday, kind of morning time Sunday, well, here we go. Heavier snow there for Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, Idaho. Then by later on the day, Sunday, 
Well, Idaho, or this is actually Dakota's mostly. Once again, this is what we've been seeing quite frequently. Uh, Wyoming, Colorado, Idaho, Montana, and then the Dakotas and Nebraska getting a lot of the action. This has been three times in a row we've had winter storms kind of in this area. But this one, even though this one doesn't look to drop the most snow, right now, according to this model run, it does on paper as far as how strong the low pressure system is, it looks the strongest, which is very, very interesting to me. And we're starting to get towards morning time Monday, and you can see it's heading north towards North Dakota. And by Monday night, you can see it's kind of moving out faster than the rest of them, which is the only good news. The, the rest of them have been kind of stalling. This one looks to kind of move out, but you can tell by the shape of this one that it is very, very similar to these, at least the one that we had very recently that's still kind of going on. Uh, it's trying to bring heavier snow to those same regions in North Dakota, but it hasn't mixing with rains. So it's a little bit warmer with this one. Tuesday morning, you can see most of the snow is in Canada and then also Minnesota by this point. And by Wednesday or later in the night, Tuesday, it has moved out. But don't pay te too much attention to the timing of this one. Just pay attention to the fact that, well, the GFS has another snowstorm that looks quite similar to what we've had in the run around the 20th. That's all we know at this point, and that's the most important thing to take from this because as far as the little details, they aren't very accurate this far out. But if they do show things consistently, we do need to pay attention to the fact that, well, they do have a snowstorm in this area. We just don't know the intensity, timing, or anything like that. But we do know that there will potentially be a situation that we're going to be having there out in the northwest and north central United States once again. So here's the total snowfall on this model run. Pay attention to the Dakotas for just a second. I want to let you guys know that most of that is coming from our snowstorm that hasn't finished up yet. So it isn't going to be another 20 inches or 12 inches plus in those greens for North Dakota. A lot of those pinks, purples, and greens are from this current snowstorm that we're dealing with as this model run is from this morning. Uh, so all the overnight snow and snowfall that's going to come today uh, from that snowstorm is right here. But for the Rockies and all of those areas to the west of that region, that's all from this upcoming one, potentially coming around the 20th. So just wanted to point that out. So that's your total snowfall on that GFS model run. Now, talking more about our snowstorm that just passed, here is your 72-hour past snowfall. I just wanted to let you guys know this is the confirmed snowfall that has fallen. In those pink colors, pinks and purples, you can see the bar uh, down there at the bottom. So pink is 6 to 12 inches, and then 12 to 24 inches is in kind of red colors. So we've only had about 12 to 16 inches for North and South Dakota, and then some areas in Montana as well. Uh, I know I'm saying only, and that's like, well, that's a lot, but we are expecting about 12 plus more to fall in North Dakota, which is just crazy. We're probably going to reach at least 30 inches of snow for some select regions in some of those areas that are already in the reds there. We probably will get over 30 inches in North Dakota. That's what I was forecasting, and that looks to come into fruition. It looks to come true. Now, here's our 24-hour expected snowfall, like I said. And you can see more of those reds popping up for North Dakota and even some yellows, meaning 24 inches plus expected to fall still for some regions. This is according to NOAA, to NOAA by the way. But yeah, some of those darker and lighter reds there, that's where we're expecting 12 to 24 inches more snowfall to fall in those regions. So this is why the situation is so extreme. It already has an extreme amount of snow that's already fallen, but we're expecting a ton more. This, this could be two separate snowstorms and it would be two major snowstorms. But it's all in one. So this is a major blizzard. And I have been calling it a blizzard. And, you know, you guys are probably like, well, there's no blizzard warnings. Well, here you go. For North Dakota, we now have blizzard warnings in all those orange areas. So it does verify. I called it a major blizzard because I saw that I thought we would have blizzard conditions. And now Noah finally agrees that we will have blizzard conditions for a lot of these nor uh, northern North Dakota regions. Now, in those purplish-blue regions... The lighter of the two blue regions that you can see on the screen now. That's our winter weather advisories. That's where we're not expecting the heaviest amount of snowfall to fall from this point forward. Uh, and in those pink regions, we are expecting the heaviest amounts of snowfall to occur. And also keep in mind that blizzard warning does not have anything to do with the amount of snow that falls. So within all those orange regions, we also have a winter storm warning, which means that's where we're expecting the heaviest amounts of snowfall to occur from this point forward. This is valid from this morning at um, about around now. So, so yeah, so this is from about now. Um, and 
in the orange regions, that's where we're expecting the heaviest amounts of wind to occur with the heaviest amounts of snowfall. So that's going to lead to blizzard conditions. In those dark blues, just in case you're wondering, to the south, that's where we have a freeze warning. That's where those areas are going to have their first freeze of the season. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, there isn't a ton of interesting things going on right now. Super interesting things coming up uh, anytime soon. So I am kind of just talking about what's been going on, what, what I think could be going on, just little things. That's kind of how yesterday's video was as well. I'm expecting things to get a lot more active. Again, especially if we're going to have a big snowstorm coming up around the 20th, I'll have a lot more videos to make. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to share it with your friends and family on Facebook, and I'll see you guys in the next one.